Good morning, good day, and good evening. Please pick accordingly. It's me, Fox. Today's video will be about vacuum plates. Uh, I will try to explain how it works, work holding, uh, fixtures, seals, vacuum pumps, and how I intend to use it. As always, I hope you will find some ideas for your own applications. I would like to start from a quick overview so it makes more sense. Um, that's my vacuum plate, as you can see, um, connected by a hose to a separator. And as a separator, I use the pressure pot, which normally is used for spray painting. Um, and I got it for around $140, I think, uh, New Zealand. And it's connected to vacuum pump. And I already had a vacuum pump and I was using it for degassing silicones for mold making and other chemicals for castings. And that pump, it's a two-stage vacuum pump, five cubic feet per minute, um, half a horsepower. Let's go back to a vacuum plate. A vacuum plate, it's 36 centimeters this way. 60 centimeters that way and two and a half centimeters thick. My first operation was to put it on the granite plate and lock it with uh, clamps, but not in a traditional way like this, but I put the clamps like that and I bolted them to my inserts in a table. The reason for it was because all of the plates which comes from the manufacturer they're all wavy and uh, they have a bow one way or the other way a couple of bows and they all over the place so the reason f um, for not clamping was not to deform it um, for milling and if I would clamp it I couldn't you know, face the whole surface. That's the other thing. Um, so once I did the top, I flip it, which becomes the bottom. I did exactly the same thing to face the top. So once I face the top, I was able to start milling grooves. I milled the grooves with the four millimeters end mill uh, in three passes. Uh, because it was my last one, I didn't want it to break it, that's why I went with three. And I guess the finish might be a bit better. <clears throat> uh, the standoffs are 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters, and every fourth has a threaded hole to prevent any vibrations and to distribute clamping force very uniformly so it doesn't deform the vacuum plate. I bolted it in 24 places under those green plugs to the granite plate to those inserts which I have scattered all over the table uh, every 10 centimeters and to prevent the air from getting in all of those holes are filled with the mold baking silicone which is this one it's a smooth on mold star I guess you could use mold star or you could use a pinky seal. Pinky seal sets in five minutes to half an hour, something like that. That's why I remember. It's pink, so I'm not sure if you're gonna like it. <laughs> and to finish the surface of a vacuum plate, I lapped it by hand using the lapping plate and the lapping grip. It's a silicon carbide. Uh, apparently it's made in Canada and that's the lapping plate it's on steel very heavy plate so you don't have to put even any force on it when you're lapping so let's move next uh, seals All right in order for vacuum table to work you have to seal the area under the part which will be used for clamping it down with the seal. For the gaskets, if I'm not mistaken, you can have three options. Option number one, closed loop gasket, 
option number two. Uh, it's a gasket which you can buy by a meter. And the third one, you can mold it yourself using mold making silicone. The silicones are coming in uh, different hardnesses, so you can pick one which works for you the best. Uh, the advantage of the mold making silicone is that you can mold gasket exactly to the shape you want, like for example one with the pointy tip. So you can mount uh, multiple parts at once without need of pressing them really hard. I want to show you two examples, closed loop gasket and the open loop gasket. So that one you can put into whatever shape you want and you sure it's sealed all around. That one you have to cut and pray that it won't lose the vacuum. Um, I did an experiment with the with this gasket and acrylic and it was holding for over two weeks without losing any pressure so I really like those and if your application requires shorter gasket you can still cut that one and the availability of that one it's much more common than that one those gaskets you can buy in some specialty stores and that one you can buy in a supermarket by buying a food container and the food container contains a gasket in the lid which you can pull and apply into your uh, vacuum plate and I picked that solution because um, I already had them uh, and if I need more, I can just go to the supermarket and buy some more containers and have more gaskets. Simple as that. Before I forget when we move forward, um, after I bolted the vacuum plate down to the granite plate, um, I milled the reference edge here, uh, just in case if I crash the machine and I have to resquare it. So it's it's good to have, so it's worth to keep in mind and let's move to um, separator as you can see it has three different valves and that hose comes from the vacuum plate and that hose goes to a vacuum pump valve to a vacuum pump it's quite important because as soon you stop the pump the pump will start introducing air back into the pressure pot so as soon you stop the pump you have to close the valve so once there is vacuum you can use that valve to suck the part down on the vacuum plate so it goes the vacuum goes to a vacuum plate and once it's sucked down you close it to release the part you open that one and you let the air in into the uh, vacuum table so how it looks inside inside I'm gonna take it out you can see there is a pipe which goes to the bottom of the pot and as you can see you have some coolant and some chips so the chips and the water goes to the bottom of the pressure pot and the air is sucked from the top of the pressure pot to the vacuum pump. This pump can work only with the gases. If you try to pump water or some particles or chips, you will kill it. The other option would be, I'm going to try my Italian now, Venturi pump, which can uh, suck air and water, uh, but it cannot deal with chips. If you suck chips, you will block it, but you won't kill it. You just have to take it apart and clean it. Uh, one drawback of the Venturi pump is that you need to have a compressor. And uh, that might be a bit noisy. So, I guess now it's the time to put all of these things together and see how it works. All closed and ready. Um, I guess you notice I don't have any gauges to tell me if there is a vacuum. 
but I know when there is a vacuum and I want to show you. So the trick is to listen. So I turn on the pump and try to listen what sound does it make. That's the pump which sucks air. And when I'm gonna close that valve, it's gonna suck the air from the hose and that's it. And then it will change the sound to way different one so you know when it's a vacuum. And now it's a vacuum. So when you move that valve, back and forth and the pump doesn't change the sound it means that there is no pressure inside so now it's a vacuum inside how do i know because when i move that valve the sound of the pump doesn't change at all uh, as you can hear none so i'm gonna turn it off okay and now i'm gonna close that valve so it the air doesn't get introduced into the pot. Now I want to show you how it works. So I'm gonna pull the part down, it's down, and I'm gonna release it. And now I can pull it down again, and release it. And I don't really have to use a vacuum pump, because I have this pressure pot. So it will last for a couple of parts and maybe a top view so you can see I'm gonna pull it down it's down and now up and down fixtures with this vacuum plate I have a few options so I can clamp it in the old-fashioned way using regular clamps and I screw them in to the hole Whoops. and clamp them this way right I could do mixture so I could use uh, a seal under that thing and use also clamps depends for which purpose it is and this what they're gonna do for sure is to make a fixture on the vacuum plate so that's gonna be my fixture and as you can see there are holes so I can drill a hole through this and to bolt it to the vacuum plate and have a seal underneath and then I will have a hole through this to the uh, channel there so it can transfer the vacuum from the bottom to the top and then on the top I will have something similar with the shape of the part I want to mill in case of screw up I won't destroy the vacuum plate also, I can cut into fixture and I don't really want to cut into the vacuum plate. Dear viewers, I try to explain as hard as I can how that type of vacuum plate works. If I failed at some point, please leave it in the comments below. And if you want to see that vacuum plate in action, please watch my humble videos in the future.